Hello everybody and welcome to part three of our Scratch Build series Aquacaras. Now today we're going to be doing at last a bit of memory modding. So you may recall G-Skill are providing the Trident Z Neo that's going into this build and whilst it does look rather nice I think that there's room here to do something really special with it not least to make it fit with the theme of the Aqua a little bit better. So what's the plan? Well stock this is how the sticks come. So they have plastic light bar, which is the same as the uh, Trident Z RGB of old. And then they have basically aluminium heat spreaders uh, with one side being anodized black and the other side a nice sort of bead blasted finish. Now, the problem is because the Aqua is completely silver, this looks a little bit out of place. And also the plastic bar on the top, whilst very good for diffusing light, I find doesn't really match up with the premium aesthetic of all the aluminium, just the kind of metallic nature of the parts in general. So I was thinking what we could do is machine some brand new light bars and make those out of aluminium. And then we can also strip back the anodizing layer on the black parts of the heat sinks on the side. And that way everything should fit in a little bit better. First up, let's take a look at the top of these light bars because actually they're a little bit more complicated than you would first imagine. Here's one I took apart earlier. So basically the design is pretty straightforward for the most part. You've got two sides of a heatsink and these go on either side of the dim themselves and then in the middle goes one of these light bars. Now these are made out of injection molded plastic and they sort of lever in and are held in place by little round tabs that slot into the slots here on the heatsinks. The thing is, those parts are going to be particularly difficult for me to machine and I think I'd be better off actually just using something like an adhesive, maybe some uh, double-sided tape to hold them in place rather than going through this fancy method. This is great for the uh, injection molded plastic because one is very flexible and two it just means you can slot them in place very easily and they'll be held in mechanically. So it's a great design from a product standpoint but from what I'm able to achieve with the setup that I have probably a little bit on the tricky side. It could maybe be doable, but would it be worth it? Probably not. But thinking of the injection mold for these parts, they're really quite impressive because the more you look into it, the more you find the little details. So things like the tiny corner radii on the inside here, there's a little slot here, which basically hooks into the top of the heat spreader. That's impressive. I can't possibly hope to machine that on my machine. So I'm not gonna bother. Instead, I'm going to just finish it off at the top there, it should look essentially the same. Now, obviously I didn't want to launch straight into this and machine it and find out that nothing fits. So what I did is I modeled it up in Fusion first and then I 3D printed a version of what I'm intending to make. So this is a PLA copy in silver PLA. Uh, it's a little bit rough around the edges because I think I'm at the sort of edge of what I can realistically print with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on some of these parts. So you see that the infill here is a little bit lame but it does show what I'm hoping to go for and it allowed me to test fit it onto the stick. So it's quite cool that they just slot in place like so. And the idea being that since the exterior is going to be opaque, and obviously we still want to have some lights, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a slot running down the middle and then I'm going to 3D print using some uh, translucent filament, the diffuser that goes on the inside of that. So that way we'll have a nice aluminium outside but we'll still have a bit of light diffusion and getting an interesting pattern, which I think should match up nicely with the rest of the board. So to make this, we're going to be using some 10 millimeter aluminium. These are only seven millimeters high, so it's going to involve facing it down quite a bit to get it to the right height. But aside from that, it should be quite interesting. So why don't we take a look at the tool path thing right now and see how I'm going to tackle it. All things considered, I think this is more of a work holding challenge than a tool pathing one, because actually the tool paths are quite simple. The trick here is trying to make sure that the whole setup remains rigid and repeatable. Now, I could have gone and cut them all out individually and tried to figure out a work holding solution for the second op, but it seemed to make more sense actually to cut them from one side and then flip the part and cut it from the other side. So to do that, I'm going to be using two dowel pins, which should be able to locate it on my fixture plate on my machine bed. Now, I did say that these are only seven millimeters high and we're obviously working with 10 millimeter stock. So what we're doing is a standard 2D pocket using a three millimeter flat end mill. 
Now I'm only using a small three millimeter end mill for this because I found that with my machine, it helps reduce chatter. So I can get a slightly higher and more even depth of cut using a three millimeter tool than one of the larger ones. So it actually cuts a little bit faster. The other handy thing is that the three millimeter tools are cheaper and I can use the Sorotech ones instead of the Datron ones because if I'm only using the tip of the end mill, it does mean it's going to wear out faster. So I'm better off just using a cheaper one and then replacing it with a new one when I need it rather than using an expensive tool uh, since I can't use the full depth of cut like you're supposed to. Now, basically what I'm going to be doing is going down three millimeters with the pocket and then I'm going to use a 2D contour to go take it further down and this will give me clearance for the chamfers and for doing the surfacing. And then I'm gonna go over with a 2D contour again just to clean up the sides and prevent any kind of minor chatter. Now, to get a finish on the top that I really want, I'm going to be switching over to a six millimeter four in one end mill from Datron and that's just going to clean up the tops. Now, I did consider using a facing op, but the problem is because of the size of the geometry of uh, these particular parts that are waving in and out, Actually, I found it quite difficult to get an even finish across the whole surface that didn't interfere with the size. So what I did is, is I drew the tool pass manually and I'm just going to use the trace command, which will just pull the end mill over the top. It's a very short tool path, so it's not a lot of work. You can just use the rectangular pattern tool to make that nice and simple. So that's what I've done. Finally, we're then going to go and do the slot. So this is going to be using a one millimeter end mill and I'm going to be using the Datron one for this one because it's nice and rigid. And I'm just going to play it, play it really, really safe with this one using a 400 millimeter uh, feed rate because these things break very easily. And especially in the middle where I'm going to be changing direction, that's a fair bit of acceleration going on there. And if you're going a little bit too fast and you have a tiny bit of shake, that end mill will snap. So I'm going to make it really simple and just go nice and low and slow and take my time with it. After doing that, we're going to finish it off with a chamfer using the six millimeter uh, countersink. And that should add some nice, nice little edges to the, to the profile and make it glint a little bit and also just add that little bit more pizzazz. So the second op is going to be a fairly simple one, but it's also very crucial that I get it all right. So we're gonna flip it, put it on the fixture plate at this particular location. And then I'm just going to use a two millimeter tool. Again, it just means I don't have to do a tool change and also reduces chatter because it's got a very small uh, surface area. I'm just going to do a 2D contour around the outside after doing the 2D channel on the inside. Now, the important thing about this channel here is that it depths it and it allows the light to go all the way through to the other side because I can't actually go down seven millimeters using the one millimeter end mill. So what I'm doing is going only two millimeters with the one millimeter, flipping it, and then I'm doing the rest of it with a two millimeter. And that will also give me a slightly larger area for which to put the 3D printed part into it from behind. Should hold it nicely in place and definitely make it a bit easier to print and give a better finish, I think. Now you may have noticed I'm not gonna be machining the sloping center boundaries. And that's just because it didn't seem worth going in there with a tiny end mill, lots and lots of different passes throughout the whole depth and then finishing it with a ball end mill when realistically I could just do that bit by hand using a jig. So that's the route I'm going to take and I think it should work out a lot quicker and be a lot more consistent because I'd be worried about extreme chatter in the middle because that's the furthest part from the ends where I'm holding it in with tabs. So it just seems like a more sensible approach. So let's pop this stuff onto the machine, get it roughed out of the stock and see where we can go.
So we've now got the replacement light bars off the machine and I'm very pleased with how they came out for the most part. Now the thing is, they're still very rough at the moment, so we need to finish them off with some files to get rid of all of the tabs and the remaining burrs from meeting from one side to the other. But then after they're fully cleaned up, I think they're gonna be rather good. So what I've gone and done is I've 3D printed some little spacers that go on the inside slots, which will help keep them nice and rigid, because at the moment they're a little bit like tuning forks. And that was one of the difficult things with machining them. The first op was very, very simple because they're all held in by the whole bottom of the block. But as soon as I turned it over, I had to start worrying a little bit about the harmonics because as soon as the tool starts brushing by them, because they've got a slot down the middle, they start to vibrate. And of course, the thinner the stock becomes, the more they vibrate and more they chatter. So I had to be very careful about how they took the vibration. And I had to alter the settings a few times just to make sure that it wouldn't end up chattering the whole piece to death and potentially ripping one of them out, destroying the end mill and the piece and having to start over. Luckily, that didn't happen and they all came out okay. So how are we going to be hand filing them? Well, these surfaces are quite simple. I'm just gonna pop those into the vise, go at them with the needle files and then finish them up with some uh, sand sandpaper to get them nice and smooth. But these parts over here that I wanted to sort of get into a nice angle to match the original bars themselves. So if you take a look at them, these have a slope to them and these don't. How are we gonna do that? Well. I basically 3D printed a little jig for it. So the cool thing about this jig is these just slot in and then are clamped in place and then it allows me to have like a file guide. So if I take these and then clamp them like so, these basically slot in place like so and then this surface can act as my reference surface for using the needle files. So I'm basically just gonna go over these by hand using the safe edge on this side over here so that I don't end up marring the original finish that I've just worked on and then that should give me a pretty repeatable finish and these are matched up to the exact pieces in CAD so it should be pretty close to the real thing. And then I can always just go over it by hand at the end as well just to check that they're all gonna fit okay. I'm also going to reduce the radius on these because this was just left by the tool and I'd rather have it nice and square so that it fits at the end. So I'm gonna do that as well. And then after this, when they're all up and finished, we're gonna put them into the tumbler and we're gonna use some dry resin media, perhaps followed by some walnut, depending on how they come out after that, so that I can get a nice finish which matches the bead blasting. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that now, and then straight after that, we're going to turn our attention to the size of these sticks, because obviously I want them to match with the uh, tops and these parts over here. So we're gonna take these sticks apart, we're going to use some uh, sodium hydroxide to remove the anodizing, and then hopefully that's all we should need to do with them. I'm gonna give them a nice good clean in the ultrasonic bath before doing that, and that should hopefully leave a nice finish. One of the cool things is that the Trident Z lettering here, that being sort of silk screened on, should actually completely stop the NaOH solution eating away that part of the aluminium. So we should actually retain the branding on the side here, which at least is rather nice, and it should look pretty good, I reckon, because that will come out very clean. And if you recall some of the other projects that we've done this for, you can get pretty complicated patterns to stay on as long as you have something covering the surface and protecting it from the NaOH. So that's what we're gonna do, and then hopefully we'll be good to go.
Now I know I say this every time, but uh, come on, I'm so happy with how these came out. The finish is exactly what I have been hoping to achieve, uh, which is really special because I've never used the tumbler in one of my projects fully for something where it's actually quite critical. So doing all that testing last week definitely paid off, I think, because it's come out with that beautiful satin which matches up with the Aqua perfectly. Now, aside from being quite a tricky machining job, it was also great fun trying to combine different disciplines with this one. So obviously we had the machining, but then we've got the 3D printing, which I used to make jigs so that I could do things by hand with the files. And then we finished off making some emery boards that you saw in the end of the video part of the filing. Um, and then just making sure that all the finishes were how I would hope them to be. Even doing things like the anodizing stripping, that's always an interesting one because it's a little bit risky. You never quite know how it will turn out. So I did all the steps that I could to try and make sure that it would come out okay. And it really did. Um, in fact, the silk screening came out particularly well. So you can still see the Trident Z Neo kind of logo on there, which I think is great. It really adds some of the original flair back to the sticks and keeps a little bit of the identity going. Now, another thing that was really cool is the fact that the light bars in here, they refract the light really, really well. So the little um, 3D printed bars that I put inside of that, now that uses a transparent PLA which of course, once you printed, becomes more of like a cloudy, opaque thing. And now I've used that in the Aorus project uh, a while ago. It had a sort of a milky appearance to it. But when it's smaller and used with just 100% uh, infill, it creates a really nice translucent look, which is perfect for diffusing lights, in this case, the LEDs on these particular sticks. Now, one of the interesting things about doing a mod like this is, you start off with something that actually does look pretty good to begin with, so you're taking a little bit of a gamble, and I wasn't 100% sure how it would come out. I mean, I can render things to my heart's content, but there's no guarantee that I can match the finish that's in the render. I might make a mistake, something might break. All these things can happen, so it's a little bit risky, but I definitely think it's paid off. Now, if you like that little journey, make sure to stay tuned because we've got some fantastic updates just around the corner because we're getting into the really meaty stuff. I'm going to be having to do all the framework, the proper water cooling, the water blocks, advanced finishing. Yeah, it's going to get pretty exciting. So you don't want to miss any of that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Of course, you can also find us over on builds.gg, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, our Discord server, which is linked below. So pop in, tell us your own projects, say hi, or just have a chat. It's all great fun. Of course, whilst you're here, if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to pop over to the merchandise store linked below and see if anything strikes your fancy. Take care, folks. I'll catch you next time.